welcome, and here we go. All right, if you are following the series, you know where things are. If you have not, go back and watch the uh, basics of Photoshop, the layout video. Um, we're going to go dive right into type right now. So we're going to go over here and choose the T for typography, for type uh, text. And you'll know that this bar is where we navigate what we can change within text. So uh, this drop down menu is going to give you all of the fonts that are available. Um, and you can choose uh, something to use. I'm just going to choose, well, let's choose Broadway for today. And then we have whether it's a regular or a bold, sometimes it depends on the font, what, what's available here. And then this is how big it is. So you do have a set list just like you do in any word processing um, where you can choose like six point font or 72 point font. However, the cool thing about Photoshop is you can make your own size. So I could type in 150 points and it's going to be 150 points. So you can see just by clicking how much larger it is. It's quite big. So I'm actually going to work in this 250 points. You'll see it gives you the lore ipsum, um, lorem ipsum uh, uh, Latin to use. So I'm going to go back here and click on text. Now it's put it in this gold color. You can choose any color you want and this is where you can choose your color um, and you can use this gradient anywhere. I mean, you can choose what you like. The cool thing about Photoshop is not only does it give you the value of the color right here, but it tells you in terms of RGB what the numbers are, in CMYK what the percentages are, and down here, this is the one that I use the most, uh, this number sign and then the coding here is actually the HTML code, which I write down when I do things I need to know the exact color and have it repeated. So you can write this down, just have a Word document or a piece of paper beside you or a Google Doc and write it down as to what color it is so that you can go back. It works really well when you're trying to do something that you want consistent coloring for. So let's just use this blue. I'm going to click OK. Now, you can move things around using this move tool on the left hand side here. So this cross at the top here is the move tool. If you, you'll see the toolbar changed. If you do not have this box checked, show transform controls, I can pick this up and move it now, but I won't be able to resize it because I can't see anything. If I click show transform controls, you'll notice it puts these little boxes around it. Now I can grab the corners and I can resize it. Now the cool thing about 2020, 2021 is it automatically assumes that you would like to keep the ratio the same when you resize from the corner. That was not the case in 2018 or 2019 or if you have an older version of Photoshop, you had to hold down shift to grab the corner and keep the ratio. Now it's the opposite. It automatically keeps the ratio. If you hold down shift, it lets you warp the ratio. So you can see that I'm making it a much longer or much wider than I was before because I'm holding down shift. Assuming you don't like what happened, like I actually would like to keep the ratio I had, these two icons at the top are going to be your, your big thing. The Ghostbuster symbol, as I like to call it, uh, means no, you do not want to keep the changes, and the check mark means yes, I do like, I would like to keep the changes I made. So I'm going to click the Ghostbuster one, and we're going to go back to what we had. So now you can see it's the original 150, if I go to text over here, it's 150 points, it's the blue color I had, it is center justified, so you can choose the justification just as you would with uh, a, f a word processing um, software and we have it set to Broadway. So I'm going to show you a couple of typography things, um, how to manipulate this type. So there's a few things you can do. So we can adjust the size as I showed you before. Um, let's just type something in here. So under text, I'm going to highlight everything and I'm just going to use, let's use the word sleep because I'm going to show you something. So sleep, there's my word sleep. Okay, now for typography, you can manipulate this text a couple of ways. Um, if the text is the text tool is selected, so I've got it highlighted over here, and the text bar at the top 
shows all of its tools. If we are to highlight sleep and go here, so this is a key thing. This text tool here has built in warping tools as would something like Word or Google Docs. So you can see right now we have no style attached. I can choose one of these and you will see that it changes or warps the text. And I have control over how much it warps the text using these sliders. So you can play around with them to get what you would like. And as always, if you don't like what you want, you can click the uh, Ghostbuster symbol and it goes back to normal or click the check mark if you'd like to keep it. So I recommend playing around with that warping bit. That only works if this layer down here has the T in it. See, this T means it's an active text layer. If it doesn't have a T, let me make it not have a T so you can see what I'm saying. So if I rasterize the type, which means I take it from editable text to acting more like a picture, now you'll see that the T is gone and I no longer can add this. It's just gonna add a new layer of text. I can no longer play with this text layer in terms of it being active text. So I can treat it like a, like a photo though. So I can use all the tools the way I would a photo, but I can no longer edit the text. How to go back. Uh, Control Z on your keyboard goes back one step. Control Shift Z goes back two steps. Um, so, or sorry, Control Alt Z. So you can go back multiple steps. The other way to find that out is to go up here to edit. And you can, right here, um, I can go undo move. I can keep doing undo until I get to the place that I want. Uh, remembering from the layout video, you can also access the history panel and remove any, let's say I wanted to remove this layer. I can drag it to the trash and now it's completely gone. I can never get it back by the way. So just keep that in mind. So there's my text layer that I still have an active text, which means that I can use these text warping tools up here.